Hi everyone, I'm Tanvid Nasir, and this is Leadership Biz Cafe, a podcast that explores some of the challenges and opportunities leaders face in today's increasingly complex, fast-paced, and interconnected global market. Leadership Biz Cafe is brought to you by Tanvid Nasir Leadership, our leadership firm that provides both virtual and in-person leadership keynotes, corporate trainings, and consulting services that will help you to improve the way you lead. To learn more about our services and what some of our clients have had to say about our work, visit our company's website at tavernasir.com. And while you're there, be sure to check out my award-winning internationally acclaimed leadership blog as well. And now, let's head over to the espresso machine and brew up another leadership espresso shot. For this leadership espresso shot, I wanted to talk about that mindset most of us have at the end of the year, where we look ahead and start planning what we hope to achieve in the upcoming year, while hopefully at the same time taking time to reflect on the past 12 months to consider what went right, what went wrong, and what we've learned that we need to hold on to and build on going forward. And let's be honest, there's certainly been a lot to unpack and evaluate from the past 12 months where, at the beginning of this year, leaders were impressed with the productivity and performance gains brought forth from employees working remotely, to the present debate over what kind of flexible work arrangements to offer to your employees and how to lead people within those conditions. But as we continue to struggle to find our way out of the pandemic, not to mention the various issues that have been stirred up in its wake, it's important that you not overlook a critical factor that will impact how successful you will be in your leadership in the months and years ahead. Namely, how you make those around you feel about themselves, about their capabilities, and the value of what they can contribute to your shared purpose. To help illustrate why this matters so much, especially in light of the numerous internal and global challenges many leaders are facing right now, Consider the legacy of one of my leadership heroes, Nelson Mandela, and how he chose to lead his life in a way that transformed his country from one that divided people based on the color of their skin to a nation that celebrated together his life and the vision he put forth for them to make as their own. Although we might remember him through his various quotes and speeches, The real leadership lesson to be gleaned from his life is how he empowered those around him to not only envision a better future for all South Africans, but how he encouraged their willingness to embrace the great expectations he placed on each of them to not only do better, but to be better versions of themselves. And Mandela was able to encourage the best in those around him because he exemplified in his actions and words his confidence that while his vision of a unified and equal society was a daunting and at times seemingly unattainable goal, it was one that his followers could nonetheless achieve if they rallied together around the shared purpose of embracing their commonality and sense of belonging and using that as the lens through which they understood and appreciated their collective efforts. And I think this is an important lesson we especially need to take note of right now, not just at the end of the year, but especially in the months ahead. And that lesson is that now more than ever, the focus of today's leadership needs to be on making efforts to connect and communicate at a deep emotional level so we can foster the kind of relationships that are critical to our long-term success and prosperity. Through such relationships, you can better understand and relate to the realities your employees face, as well as what it's really like to work for you, as opposed to relying solely on your own perceptions and understandings to decipher what's going on in your organization. It's a phenomenon I refer to in my book as leadership vertigo, where a gap exists between how you view your leadership and how your employees experience your leadership. In fact, if you are to address the challenges and hardships that lie before you right now, not to mention those we will all inevitably face over the upcoming months and years, you need to show your employees that you're able to understand what kind of support and guidance they'll need from you 
instead of simply reacting to what you see going wrong and what you believe needs to be corrected to keep them on course. You need to show your employees that you have their backs as much as you expect them to have yours because you believe in their native talents, creativity, insights, and experiences. That they can help you to not only address and overcome the obstacles your organization is currently grappling with, but that they can enable your organization to succeed and thrive over the long run. Again, to be clear here, this shouldn't simply be an end-of-year exercise you do to figure out how well you did over the past few weeks and months. Rather, this needs to be present in every interaction, whether that be virtual or in-person, so that your employees see you are truly committed to seeking stronger connections in order to better understand the reality of those you lead and what they really require from you to help them succeed. And that means your employees need to feel safe under your leadership, not just in the physical sense, but in the emotional sense, because you are being intentional in seeking to understand not just their emotional state and how that colors their perceptions and understandings, but equally important that you're aware of your own emotions and how they impact and influence those you lead. That's why we continue to look for inspiration and guidance from leaders like Nelson Mandela or whomever you admire for their skills and accomplishments leading others through turbulent and uncertain waters. Although we may find comfort and inspiration through their words and sage advice, what makes them so effective in helping us strive to be better at leadership was their own pursuit of seeking out the best in all of us that they challenged us to see ourselves the way they saw us, of the potential that exists in all of us to make things better than they are today. In so doing, they were able to compel us to not only believe that we could experience a better future or outcome, but to be willing to roll up our sleeves and commit our discretionary efforts so that we might take part in making that vision a reality. Looking ahead to next year, this means that as leaders, we have to move beyond simply thinking in terms of incremental improvements, because that's not what's going to excite and enable your employees to achieve more than they did this year. That the biggest issue you face is not whether to offer remote work options in order to retain and attract the people you need to drive your organization's growth and prosperity. Rather, What we should all appreciate from what we've experienced over these past 18 months is that we need to dream bigger. We need to commit to higher expectations, not just for our employees, but for ourselves as their leader of what we can collectively accomplish. You need to move beyond those shiny button measures meant to rally your employees' efforts and instead commit yourself to pushing forth genuine change that will allow all of us to be better than we were this year. You need to create great expectations for your organization framed within your confidence in the abilities of your employees to attain them because you understand how the ability to accomplish a goal that few would be willing to take on is key to helping to foster a sense of community and shared purpose if not also fueling that drive that exists in all of us to reach for something bigger than ourselves. That is, after all, what the best leaders amongst us do. They don't simply balance budgets or increase profit margins or improve delivery times and product offerings. Instead, they help us to aspire to achieve something bigger, something more significant, by encouraging a sense of purpose and meaning in what we do. The best leaders make sure we understand that the value we create is not limited to our shareholders or customers, but extends out to our community as well as inward towards ourselves. And they do this by ensuring a better alignment between our organizational values and the beliefs and the reasons why we do what we do. The arrival of a new year is often felt and seen as an opportunity for a fresh start, for new beginnings, and a chance to do things better than we did before. With that in mind, I'd like to encourage you to reflect on the lessons learned from the various experiences of the past year, 
and how they can help you to guide your employees to not only be successful in their collective efforts, but to thrive under your leadership. And as leaders like Nelson Mandela have shown us through their legacy, it's by recognizing that the answers we require to move forward can be found through fostering deep connections with those we lead, allowing us to inspire and enable them to envision a future where they can do and be better than they are today. That's a lesson I hope you'll not only take to heart right now as you look forward to what the start of a new year might bring, but in the subsequent months thereafter, when your employees will continue to look to you for support, guidance, and insights on how they can deliver and be their very best. And with that, we reach the last drop of yet another Leadership Espresso Shot. It's interesting how the end of the year encourages us to reflect on what we've accomplished, as well as what we endured over the past couple of months. But I hope this reminder of what made those leaders we all admire and look to for insights on how we can improve our leadership craft encourages you to make reflection and review a weekly, if not daily, part of your leadership routine. That you use this exercise to not only ensure you're on the right path to achieving your goals, but more importantly, that you're engaging and nurturing those relationships with your employees that, as we've all come to appreciate over the course of this pandemic, are just so critical to our collective ability to succeed, thrive, and feel a sense of belonging and connection. And if this idea resonates with you and you'd like to explore in greater depth how you can achieve this with your team and organization, I'd like to invite you to fill out the contact form on my website at tampinasir.com so we can start that discussion. I'd also like to encourage you to visit the speaking and workshop pages on my website to learn more about some of the topics I cover in my leadership keynotes and corporate training events. In the meantime, I'd like to encourage you to share this or other episodes of my podcast with your colleagues and employees. The easiest way to do this is to simply share a link to my show's podcast page at tavidnasir.com slash LBC, where you can find links to subscribe to my podcast on the various major platforms, an online media player to listen to past episodes, as well as links to show notes for all episodes of the podcast. And if you haven't already done so, please do rate and review my leadership podcast on your preferred podcast platform to help support our podcast and encourage others to check us out. And with that, I'm Tavin Nasir, and you've been listening to Leadership Biz Cafe.